Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again with yet another deck tech from the Brothers War. And this is another one of the cards that I picked, saw, well I picked one up luckily in my sealed pool at the weekend at the pre-release. Didn't play it, but it was one of the cards I was really hoping I'd pick up early in the format so I can actually build it as a real life commander deck. And I've built it online now. And I will say before we go any further on this deck tech, the only card that comes from Brothers War in this deck is the actual commander itself. So please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, let me know what cards I've missed when you see the deck in a minute, and put them down below in the comments. I can always go and change it on MTGO, got no problem with that, but I need to know what I've missed. I did look at the Brothers War list, there was nothing there that inspired me for this deck at all. I suspect there are things I've missed entirely, so let me know down below in the comments, because I'm pretty sure this card is going to go competitive level really, really quickly. And the card itself is is Queen Kalia Bin Krug, one red and a white for a 2 3 legendary creature, human noble. Has a really interesting ability pay four mana, tap, discard your hand. Hmm, okay, maybe not so great. Then draw that many cards. Okay, filter through our hand, quite happy with that. And then you may choose an artifact or creature card with mana value one, mana value two, and mana value three. I'm shorthanding the text as you can see. Put them back into play. Put them back onto the battlefield. Doesn't come into play, sorry. Enters the battlefield. Put them onto the battlefield. You can only activate it as sorcery. That's fine. No issue with that. But discard your hand. Draw a whole load of new cards. Put whatever you've put into the graveyard onto the battlefield. Yeah, okay then. Like this plan. So, I went with a... Like I say, this is a bit of a more of a fun deck. It's not particularly competitive, but it's just something fun. I think it's going to be worth playing this. Like I say, Queen is going to go up. She's going to be, I've personal opinion, I think she's going to be one of the top commanders in the new set. So bear that in mind. But this is what my deck list looks like for this one. So we'll run through the cards like I always do. Anything I think is interesting, I'll talk about a little bit more, but you'll probably see most of these cards already. Now, as you can imagine, Everything that's an artifact or creature is mana value 1 to 3. There's nothing at 0, so there's none of my suspend cards you usually see. There's nothing above 4 in the artifact section, as you can see on screen at the moment. And there's nothing really else. Now, there are a few cards that are above 4. I'll get to them. You can probably imagine what they are. We're in red and white. I'm pretty sure you can work it out. But let's just run through the creatures. Without the Queen, Impulsive Pilferer. Helps with the treasure when it dies. Luminarch, veteran, gains some life. So our ascendants take advantage of that life we're gaining. And obviously, you know, turn one, six, six, we're flying on lifelink. Thank you very much because they still haven't ever to this card for EDH. And I don't think they're ever going to. So let's bear that in mind. Soul Warden helps us gain some life. Speaker of the Heavens makes us angels when we get above seven life. And we've got enough ways, if you've just seen here, from these three cards to get above there. Weathered Wayfarer to go and find a land card and put it into my hand. Uh, nice way of shuffling your deck, getting rid of things you don't want, and sort of like thinning your deck out a bit. I've gone with Anafenza just so we can make our creatures bigger because they're also like topping up at three drops. They're going to be quite small on the whole, so getting that extra plus one, plus one counter may keep us in the game a bit longer. Bed, our Gravian Recruiters in as well. If we've got a creature at the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with a power greater than its base power, create a 1-1 one, one sol White Soldier token. That's the reason we have some of the cards coming up that you can see sitting around over here at the moment, but we'll get to them. Containment Priest, because, you know, if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it. Thank you. We can do that in response to all sorts of things, but yeah, so a little bit of control. It's a red deck, dock sides in. I've had this conversation in a lot of my videos. Sorry, it's going to be here for this one. Hanwar Militia Captain's in as well. Mainly because we want to get some more tokens into play. And it becomes a reasonable threat really quickly. Honoured Crop Captain. Other attack, when it attacks, other attacking creatures you control get plus one plus nothing until the end of turn. Thank you very much for two mana. I'm quite happy with that. Humble Defector. You'd be surprised showing this card around in a game with MTGO Commander or Commander in general. Doesn't mean you usually get it back because people like drawing cards and you give it to a friendly opponent. Bit of negotiation, they give it back to you. You can both keep drawing some extra cards, which is quite nice when you're playing a Boris deck because it is hard to draw cards. Knight of the White Orchid, go and find a planes if we need it. Luminarch Aspirant, let's make our creatures bigger with the plus one plus one counters. 
Magda, the Brazen Outlaws here. Other dwarfs you control get plus one, plus nothing. Whenever a dwarf creature you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token. Now, we can get artifacts with this, which is part of the reason it's here. We haven't got that many artifacts, but they could be useful. So I kind of cheated. And I figured, you know, we're in November. It's getting near Panto season here in the UK. So I thought I'd better have the seven dwarfs. Having, well, I suppose you could call Thalia Snow White if you want to go with something, but we'd have the seven dwarfs in. Thalia, Tithe Taker, Tomric are all here basically to slow our opponents down so we have a better chance of surviving. Adeline, Resplendent, Cathars in as well. I do like this card. I think it's going to be, I think it's quite fun. And just getting those little 1 1 creatures is nice. Likewise, Aethan Sensor goes in the same kind of pile as these three, a bit more controlling. Captain Lannery Storm, more treasures for us, means we can cast more things. Combat Celebrant, so we can make, take hopefully extra attack steps and win. Fiend Hunter Familiar, to control some of the annoying creatures. Uh, Frontline Filigree Familiar, sorry, gain two life. Draw a card when it dies, I'm happy with that. Frontline Medic. Not a card you see very often, I have to be honest. However, we will be attacking a lot with this, and we've got, you know, one of the enchantments gives us a way of giving all our creatures haste. It's the only enchantment in the deck, as you can see on the screen, but we'll get to it. And making all your creatures indestructible when it attacks seems like a really good plan to me. Hanwar Garrison's in. That's probably going to be our biggest creature. Uh, we do have the other half of it kicking around. There's the battlements, so we can meld it together to make the writhing township if we really need to. Kemba Car Regent. We've got a few bits of equipment in the deck, which I will gain, I will come to in a minute, um, which means we do get some 2-2 white cat creature tokens. Um, so, yeah. Here comes our main win condition, Mirror Entity. Basically, you want to get a whole load of creatures in play, have a whole load of mana flowing around, either from treasure tokens from the Seven Dwarfs or just by not casting anything. And, yeah, we're playing 36 lands in this deck, but we are topping out around about three for most of the important stuff. You're going to have mana to sink into this. Attacking, and don't forget this doesn't have to attack. You can just have it sitting there at the back, being defensive, and you can swing with all your creatures, get all the triggers, let all the triggers resolve, and then pump a whole load of mana into here and make those creatures massive and just literally obliterate your opponent. This is probably going to be one of the main win conditions of the deck, so bear it in mind. Pinar Nomad Captain, just so we can have a bit more pumping when we're attacking. Squeak, Dubious Monarch. I had to have one Squeak in the deck, and I went with this one. It's quite nice. Haste attacks, gets a 1 1 red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking. Thank you very much. And also, it's got a nice little ability where you can pay for, get it back from your graveyard, and exile some of the other stuff out of your graveyard. So bear in mind. Last card Talgic Legion's Edge. Um, Haste Mentor. It also, you know, prevent all non combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. That's quite nice. It means things like some of the removal we're coming to in a minute below us won't really affect it. So, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, it's got to be combat that kills your creatures off, not anything else. So, yay. Right. So, speaking of ways of controlling the board, Defi and Clarion, life you can do both if you need to. You don't really want to unless you've got Talgic in play. But the lifelink side of it could keep you alive. Chain Reaction, Day of Judgment, Doomscar, Blasphemous Act, just to clear the board away. Approach of the Second Sun is a backup win condition for this deck. Not going to lie about it. I play a lot of white decks, and where I'm playing a white deck, I do put Approach of the Second Sun in. I know I did it the other day with the Tosky one, but hey, shoot me later. Approach of the Second Sun in here seems like a really good backup win condition for us. Going back to the other side, Artifacts, Ether Vial to cheat our creatures in. This has come down in price a lot. You know, this originally when Etherfile first came out on MTG, it was around about 17 tickets. It's down to four at the moment. It's worth picking up one if you haven't already. Elixir of Immortality, shuffle everything back in. Mana Vault. Now, I've gone with Mana Vault over Mana Crypt, mainly because this is Mana Value 1. So if for some reason it does end up in your graveyard, you've got a chance of getting it back with the Queen. So bear that in mind. Sensei's Divining Top, manipulate the top of your library. Soul Rick. Just so we can have some extra mana kicking around, because at some stage the queen will die, and you do need to be able to pay the four colorless to do the thing. So you know, do her trigger her ability, so it's worth having there. Arcane signet just to help with the mana. Captain's claws, it's quite a nice little bit of equipment. It gives us something we can trip to cut equip trip, equip to car. 
So having this come in with the 1-1 one, one white core ally token tapped and attacking is quite nice. A little bit of pump. It's only equipped for one, so it's not overly complicated. Fellwell Stone for a little bit more mana ramp. Howling Mine for the card draw. Mine Stone for the ramp. Swift Foot Boots to protect the Queen. And also, if you've got enough mana floating around, Queen comes into play. Equip the boots. Yes, it means you've got to have eight mana in play. It's doable with this deck. It's not overly hard. So, yeah, just means you can get the Queen out and running as quickly as possible. Talisman of Conviction for a bit more ramp. It's quite nice this side because, oh yeah, okay, it's painful to do the red and the white. But it's also got a colourless outlet, so that does help. Halo Fountain. I am determined to get the 15 creatures in a play at some stage, pay 5, and win the game. Just so we're clear, so it's in this deck. Plus it's under th it's 3 mana, so, you know, discard it with the Queen, get it back into play without casting it. Three, four other bits of equipment that all cost 3. Sword of Body and Mind, blue, green and blue. Blue's a problem. Fire and Ice, red and blue are a problem. And black and white. Yep, okay, gives us protection for mainly everything. There's also the Reaver Cleaver. Now, this is quite pricey still, although, well, actually, it's come down loads. So, nope, take it back. It was pricey. Go and get this bit of equipment. If you haven't got it already, go and find one. It's brilliant in Commander on MTGO. Plus one, plus one, and trample, especially onto our small stuff. And when it deals combat damage to a planeswalker or a planeswalker, get that many treasure tokens. Yeah, okay then. <laughs> Goes really well on something, you know, like Knight of the White Orchid because of the first strike. Goes really nicely on Tomic because it's one of the few flyers we've got in the deck. Or, you know, if you've managed to get what your soul of Sarah Ascendant out or get a Angel into play, equip it, equip it, equip it. Get those treasure tokens, ramp your mana up. The only non artifactal creature apart from lands in the deck is the Hammer of Perforos. I couldn't remember. I'm pretty sure there is an artifact that does mass haste. Couldn't remember it, so I went with the Hammer of Perforos. Yes, we can't return it if it gets disenchanted or removed, but. You know, given all our creatures, haste is a nice little side effect. Beyond that, the usual selection of red white lands. Obviously, Arid Mess is in, which is not too bad on MTGO at the moment. And somewhere a little bit further down, I've got Plateau in, which has dropped considerably to $1, basically, $1.03 on MTGO. I will point out that because of this deck and because I was really worried about getting some more creatures into play, I have gone with Fable Passage, I have gone with Field of the Dead. You haven't seen them for a while, I still own them on MTGO, so they're there. The rest of it is pretty much there, because you're not going to worry about it, because you are going to empty your hand really quickly, so if people bounce stuff back to your hand, oh well, so be it. You know, you are the most expensive card in the deck, will be Approach of the Second Sun. I know Blasphemous Axe is technically 9, but it's never going to cost you 9 with this deck. And that's it. I figured we could get away with 36 lands in the ramp. So there you go. That's my little take on Queen Kalia Bin Krug. As soon as I can pick the Queen up, this will be one of the first cards I play on stream. I'm expecting the rest of the decks I'm doing that are coming up shortly will be a bit more pricey as things go along. But the Queen is here. I have built the Queen. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, let me know what I've missed in the comments section hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'm trying to build the numbers up here as i said in my video the other day look up lotus bloom gaming as well it's a friend of mine we played at the pre-release at the weekend and they've been doing some really good cheaper uh, monetary value deck techs i'm just going to stick to what i'm doing but go and give her a look as well but that's it so thanks for being here come and give me a follow on twitch come and have a game with me on there next time i'm streaming and i'll hopefully see you over there soon take care i'm out of here Good night, farewell, enjoy the Queen Kalia Bing Krug on MTGO.